Welcome to our Monday Live. If you're new here, skip ahead a couple minutes because I'm going to wait for everybody to get on. Good morning, good morning. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. We're going to get started in just a minute. Hello from Detroit. Nice. Buenos dias. So we're going to get started in just a second, you guys. How was everybody's weekend? Hi. Yeah, Heather, I'll actually be able to see y'all's comments now. <laughs> Good morning from OKC, from California, from Colorado. Awesome. Good morning, Miss Motti. There's Miss Ann. Not so good. Your marriage is ending. I'm so sorry. I have been there. I've been there, so I completely understand. Y'all's weekend was good? Awesome. Didn't win any Super Bowl money? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hello from India. Oh, my stepsister lives in India. Very nice. Hello from Vegas. Okay. Weekend was amazing. Did a family ancestry research. Oh, nice. I bet that was fun. Hello from Dubai. Thank you, Monty. I'm feeling good, healing more and more. I went um, Friday and watched a friend of mine's boyfriend play. He, he uh, is a singer and plays guitar and does all the things. And so that was fun. It was a little, uh, wore me out a bit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but it was a lot of fun to get to get out and spend time with my gal pals and all that, all that stuff. So it was much needed but it did wear me out. <laughs> my breathing and talking is getting better. I'm just, you know, it's got to build that stamina back up. I know, isn't that crazy how now we can talk to anybody around the world? I freaking love it. Like, I have clients from all over the world, and it's amazing. Hey, Charlotte. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Okay, so... What we're going to do is we are going to get started, but first we're going to clear out the heart chakra, right? We need to get rid of all the heaviness, anything we've been carrying around over the weekend. Let's get rid of that. Let's, let's vibrate higher to the frequency of the heart because the heart is one of our strongest chakras, right? Chakras. I always want to say chakras, but it's chakras. Anyways, what you want to do is just breathe and accept the vibration, okay? Because when you listen to the vibration, your body automatically starts attuning to the same frequency. It's called sympathetic vibration, okay? So just breathe, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, and just take a few seconds for yourself, okay? Here we go. everything. All right, everybody take one deep collective breath in. Pick up all the heaviness. Expand your lungs, okay? We, we normally breathe too shallow. Expand your lungs. Now blow it out quickly. <sighs> okay? Most of us are shallow breathers and don't even realize it. And we need that oxygen, Okay. All right, so let's get our fairy blessing for the week. Hey, Miss Heather. Thank you, Denise. 
All right, so our fairy blessing is the overall blessing that we get for the week. And then we're going to look at each day. We're going to look at Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, we're going to look at Friday through Sunday. Y'all, look at this big feather that was in my bed the other night. I don't have anything that has feathers on it. I don't have any bedding that has feathers in it. I pulled back my covers, and this was laying in my bed. So I put it up on my desk. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I have it sitting here. And then I found this other one on the floor the other day. So I found two in about a week or two, week and a half maybe. So, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so let's see what our fairy blessing is for the week. I have no idea where those came from, but I mean, I do know, but physically. <laughs> During my tarot class, when I was in tarot apprenticeship, uh, I had literally had a feather materialize in front of my face and then fall to the ground. That's how crazy it was. Look, you guys, we have a blessing of power. We keep getting messages like this, right? So last weekend, we had a blessing of glamour magic. The one before that, we had something relating to power. I can't remember what it was exactly, but we keep getting a blessing of power. It's number 25, okay? So we all know what two is, right? If you're new here, two is relationships, it's balance, it's duality, it's that sensitivity, it's that connection, okay? Five, change, movement, freedom, okay? When we add them together like we do in numerology, it becomes seven. Seven is that spiritual number. It wants to know why. It wants to know the deeper meaning. It wants to understand, and it wants to get all that knowledge so it can be free, okay? So when you en embrace that power and you know that every decision that you make is either freeing you or confining you, what are you gonna do? You're gonna make different decisions. You're gonna make more empowered decisions. You're gonna follow that intuition. You're gonna know that these, these signs are telling you something, okay? It's telling you that you're being heard, that you're not alone, that a shift is coming, all of these things, okay? But you have to be in charge of it, nobody else. Got it? You got to dream about peacock feathers. Ooh, interesting. Look that up. Peacocks are really symbolic for a lot of, um, I can't remember the exact meaning, but it's, it's very powerful, the peacock. Okay, so let's pick, pick our deck that we're going to use for the reading. You're going to let me know in the comments, and y'all help me keep track of who voted what or how many's got what, okay? So deck one is the Wizard's Tarot. Deck two is the Kipper deck. One or two? Y'all let me know in the comments which one you want me to use. Oh, congratulations. So this is a promotion you got at work? So deck one or deck two? Y'all help me keep track. It looks like on TikTok, one is getting it. One or two. Ones are getting it there. I know I can create a poll, but I'm on TikTok and Instagram, so it would just, it would take too long for me to do that. Just vote once. Okay, so Jamie is one's getting it on Instagram too. Well, congratulations on your new role. That's awesome. I'm just waiting on my results. Because <laughs> I think one's got it on TikTok. Okay. All right, cool. So we'll do we'll do deck 1 and then oh, twos have it on Instagram. Oh. 
Oh, crap. I almost lost my feather, y'all. <laughs> um, did One's got it on TikTok, though, right? The fairy blessing was a blessing of power. Okay, thank y'all. All right, so we'll do deck one, and then we'll pull one from the Kipper deck as like an oracle card. All right, what do we need to know this week? So we're gonna pull a card for each day, Monday through Thursday. We're gonna see what the energy is for us, talk about it, and then we'll pull some oracle. The more you come to these readings, you guys, the stronger it's going to be, okay? People tell me that all the time. One of my friends told me that um, this weekend. She's like, I, every time I show up live to the reading, she goes, it's like it's more solidified for me. And I'm like, yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jamie. It's been bad for you. The new moon isn't going to be bad. It could be your perception of it is bad if you're going through changes. But the new moon in Aquarius is all about the, the rebel, right? Doing things radically different. So it could feel like it's bad for you, but it's actually pushing you towards another path. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the energy of today. Today we have, if I can read that, we have the King of Wands in reverse, okay? So, when the King of Wands is in reverse, this can indicate a couple of things. With this being a general collective, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, if this is you, it could be that you're feeling exhausted and there's something that you're feeling like you want to give up on. It could feel like you don't have control of a situation, so you're like, you know what, forget it, I can't. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, and now I'm just done, okay? It can also be that you are dealing with a person who is trying to be controlling in one way or the other, okay? Anytime a court card in tarot is in reverse, it's indicating being in the low vibrational energy, okay? When we're in the low vibrational energy, we're in our ego, and our ego likes to control because our ego is only focused on the physical world. Does that make sense? So when we're only focused on the physical world, we feel weak and we feel helpless, so then we try to control to give us that power, that sense of power back, right? Because we have the blessing of power, but it's not a power to control. It's a power of I can respond to situations that are going on in my life, I can surrender to the universe, and I can make decisions that are gonna be right for me. I can't make somebody else do anything, and nobody else can make me do something. Make sense? If that first part is not for you, then you don't know what it is. Uh-oh. Just nailed it. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. The new moon was an intense one. It was squaring Uranus and conjuncting Pluto. Don't resist any change or energy shifts that have occurred. Blah. If I could speak. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie always keeps us up to date on all the astrology. So, yeah, very grateful for that. Okay, let's look at Tuesday, okay? So, Tuesday, we have the Five of Swords. Now, you guys, so we have all of this change happening. The Five of Swords is conflict. Now, this can be internal conflict or it could be conflict with this person, okay? The person who's trying to control or exude force over you. Now, this is asking you to choose your battles. Whatever battle you're in, yeah, you do have the upper hand because this is direct. However, when we're battling with somebody, when we have conflict with somebody, it's never a good thing, right? Because then again, we're in our ego, we're looking at just the physical, and we're saying, I've got to win. I've got to win. I've got to make them do something. i got to make them see something. i got to make them feel something. Make sense? Okay. If this is internal conflict, this is asking you to chill. Okay. Because if you have, if your mind's always going, 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 then you're never going to find peace. Okay. If your mind cannot 
come to peace, if it can't settle, if you're always second guessing yourself, if you always have this internal conflict, then you will never win at life, okay? Remember, life is an experience. We are all going to mess up. We're all going to second guess ourselves or doubt ourselves. We're all gonna go through all of these ugly situations, but it is not your job to shame or guilt yourself. It's your job to just correct your path. But like, you know what? That situation sucked. Let me do something differently now, okay? Now let's look at Wednesday. So Wednesday we have the Hermit in reverse. This is gonna indicate one of two things, depending on your behavior over the next couple of days with the King of Wands in reverse today, and then Tuesday, the swords. So let me also say, on Tuesday, just watch your communication, okay? If you feel like somebody's baiting you into an argument or just is being ugly, don't pay it any attention, okay? Don't fall for it. You don't have to, okay? So just watch your communication on Tuesday. Anyway, so the hermit in reverse can indicate a couple of things dependent on how you're navigating this week. So when he's in reverse, he can indicate telling you, you it's time to get out and go socialize. Hermit time is over. Go socialize and don't like build up a wall to where nobody can get through and then complain that you're lonely, right? Also, it can indicate that there is a resistance to learning from what has just happened. It's gonna be either or, and you get to decide. Make sense? So on Wednesday, if you have plans to go out and socialize, perfect, okay? Use what you've learned throughout your life, throughout your week, whatever. Observe and, and use these tools that you're given every week that we come here Use these lessons to navigate through your experiences. Don't, just because you go out into society, don't forget everything that you've learned, okay? I had a student one time say that they were, well, multiple times, say that they're really good at, you know, all the lessons they've learned, using their tools and everything when they're in their environment, but as soon as they step out of their environment, it's like it all goes to hell in a handbasket, right? And I'm like, you can't let, let it just slide away. That's not what this is about. Anybody can navigate their life when they're in their own environment, hold, help, you know, hold up in their home. It's the people that know how to use these tools and aren't afraid to use these tools as they go out into society, dealing with their friends, family, coworkers, whatever it may be. Those are the people that actually elevate and reap the rewards of their work, okay? So this is why it takes practice. This is why you can't um, shame yourself for making mistakes. This is why you want to really practice your tools because then it becomes muscle memory, setting boundaries. You gotta rehearse your little speech, okay? Does that make sense? That's Valentine's Day? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Don't be afraid to get out there. If you're, if you're single, you can take yourself out on a date. Do whatever you want. You know, Valentine's Day is just a day, you guys. Let's not hold it up here and, and hold ourselves down here because we don't have a date or somebody didn't do any, something that we expected. You can't have expectations of what a person's going to do. You appreciate the effort that they put in. If it doesn't align with you, then it doesn't align with you. But if you hold these massive expectations and the person doesn't deliver, it doesn't mean that they're worthless. It just doesn't mean that they're, it just means that their brain doesn't work that way. Okay? So let's look at Thursday. Look at there. Much better day on Thursday. We got the star again. So last weekend we had the star on Saturday. So this is Aquarius energy. So this is Virgo energy. So be careful about this. You don't want to overanalyze the day. You don't want to overanalyze your relationships, okay? See them as they are. Appreciate the person as they are. 
Don't try to change them. Don't try to control them, right? We're not here to do that. On Thursday, things get better, okay? Thursday, that's where we are more aligned. It could be that you go through conflict with somebody this week, and then Thursday, you start the healing process, okay? Th Thursday, you're more in alignment. You're pouring into one another. You're healed. You're allowing yourselves to be vulnerable. If you're on your own, if you're single, then this could be an internal conflict that you're experiencing or somebody, you know, like when your friend group or your family or your coworkers that you're having to deal with. It's like, just don't, don't get into the conflict. Don't pay attention to all the social media BS about Valentine's Day. Remember, all you're seeing is everybody's highlight reel. Okay, really. People can have the most to post on holidays but the rest of the days, the relationship sucks, okay? So don't fall for that. And it, just like, you know what? I'm happy for them. They're having a great day. That's awesome. I'm going to have a great day too. I'm going to do something nice for myself, whatever it is, okay? So like I said, on Thursday, things are feeling better. Well, you might experience some sort of path shift, happening okay now it doesn't have to be physically it could be something going on internally where you have this revelation of oh maybe I should try this kind of like a serendipitous moment on Thursday okay so expect miracles on Thursday expect serendipity expect alignment on Thursday the energy is going to be nice and right for that okay Your experience in relation to many of the aspiring readers on TikTok is daunting. Thank you. Not to put anyone down. Just happy to see this level of ability. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate your help. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. The bottom of the deck is we have the Seven of Cups in reverse. Remember how I said you might have a revelation? Seven of Cups is better in reverse, okay? Because when it's direct, it's like you have all these thoughts and ideas and you're like, I'm not sure. Part of it is like, I'm not sure if I have what it takes to do what I'm dreaming about over here, right? And part of it is you're, you have all these ideas and everything. You're not sure which way to go, where to start, what to choose, okay? So this is all to, gu I've got goosebumps. This is all to guide you towards this revelation that very well likely could come on Thursday, okay? Because the seven of cups in reverse indicates clarity. It indicates understanding exactly what you have within and what you can choose to go towards, okay? Because we're so inundated with so much stuff, so much information all the time, that it's really hard for us to know what is meant for us. If you don't know your energetic blueprint, oh my God, you're gonna be lost in life, okay? This is why I always recommend knowing your energetic blueprint because you very well likely are not meant to operate the same way that you're getting, or the same way as the person that you're getting advice from. So this is why I try to talk about all the different aspects of what we're seeing here because I know that everybody operates differently, okay? Just like if you're a, if you're a projector, things are really supposed to like come to you, okay? You are one of the ones that can receive money easily and effortlessly. If you are a generator, you're more than likely going to have to work to receive that money. Like you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to receive that money, okay? So when you're hearing people tell you, oh, you can just manifest money easily and effortlessly, it's just going to come to you, that's not always the case because that might not be the way you operate, okay? Yeah, I like that, Jamie. The main theme this week, the power of choice. Absolutely, yep, because yeah, we have the blessing of power. You hold the power here. Always. You, it's like the Wizard of Oz. Remember, we've talked about that. Her shoes are red for a reason. Her shoes are red because red symbolizes power. 
and power. They're on her feet because she can take whatever path she wants to. She has the power. She's standing in her power. She just didn't know it. Okay? So you always have the power in your life. I was watching a documentary last night on um, Pamela Anderson. You know, it was interesting. I finally broke down and watched it because I thought at first it was probably going to be dumb. But I loved it because it humanized her and she did not play the victim. Man, she has gone through so much trauma in childhood, in adult life. She's, she's gone through a lot. And she still is like, I'm not a victim. She goes, I did put myself in some pretty crazy situations and I did survive them. You know, she knows that her life is her choices. And she understands that some of her choices are askewed because of her childhood. So when you acknowledge that, yeah, you went through some hard times and it formulates how you make decisions, it helps you to start making different decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah, also specific and non-specific manifesting. Absolutely, Anne. Anne is teaching us more and more about human design in our monthly uh, master classes. Y'all are so kind. Thank you. Is that making sense, though? It's like you had some shitty, shitty things happen to you. And it formed how you perceived yourself and how you make decisions. But now that you acknowledge that, yeah, those shitty things happened to me and I was not in control at that time, but now I'm in control. Now I can see where in the past I've put myself in certain positions. Now I can do things differently. Okay? I had to do the same thing. With Pluto sitting in Aquarius, it's about, to, uh, it's about harnessing your personal power to create your future. There we go. The cards always know. What about a manifester, manifesting generator 6-2? Just found out about my human design. Uh, research it more. Um, come to our ma uh, monthly master classes, and we're getting more and more into it. So let's get some Oracle. You know what? I did pull this one this morning because it was speaking to me. So let's see what we need to know. Me too, Jamie. Learning that you were a non-specific manifester, it, it made a lot of difference to me too because I was like, it was hard for me to think of specifics. You know, it was hard, to me to focus on, hard for me to focus on specifics. So when I just started focusing on the roundabout, what I want to experience, the emotion, that's when it kicked into gear. And I did it without even knowing it. And then when I learned about human design, I was like, oh, that's why it works so well. <laughs> you don't have to be specific. You have to look at your human design and see if you're a specific or non-specific manifester. I'm non-specific. Let's see what else we need to know about this week. What other messages do we have? It's not easy to choose from. Ooh, we have altar honoring. I'm going to read this one because I hardly ever use this deck. It is powerful. But we're going to find it. Give me one sec. An altar is a sacred place in which to honor a great spirit. Nature itself is an altar to the shaman, but having your own altar helps you to focus on rituals, ceremonies, and prayer. It is for the laying out of ritual tools and for holding pictures or artifacts of chosen deities and ancestors. It is a place of worship and of honoring personal beliefs. It is a meeting place between the ordinary and the spiritual realms. Honor that, honor that which is sacred to you. Make room for quiet time. Dedicate an altar in your house or garden to that which you are aligned to spiritually. So that means whatever you believe in, create a quiet place for yourself. 
where if you want statues, if you want candles, if you want spiritual artifacts, that's your, your quiet place, okay, to where you can go and focus and check in with yourself, okay? You can do your prayers, you can do your meditation, whatever that means to you, okay? Focus will bring desired results. Make time in your day for gratitude and thanksgiving, time for re reflection. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're a specific manifester, you would get specific on what it is that you want or you're asking for. If you're non-specific, you focus on the, the feeling, the emotion, and you know just the whole experience of being in that energy. But your altar doesn't have to be, when people think of altars, they think of like religion or they think of like witchcraft. It doesn't have to be that. It can be whatever you want it to be, okay? Let me make sure I got all of them. Okay, yeah, I did. <laughs> Thought I left one behind. All right, let's see what we need to know from the Kipper deck. Is all this making sense? Do you understanding? How do you tell if you're a specific manifester? You have to look up your human design. I like that, Anne. You gotta look up your human design and then it will um, it'll tell you. Let's see, let's see. We have main female, look at that, it's number two. We've been getting a lot of twos lately, okay? Again, twos are about balance and choices. This is also kind of like the high priestess because she's number two in the tarot, okay? She sit, sits between the pillars, she is in her sovereign energy, and she waits because she knows that what she holds is valuable. She knows that her time is very precious. Her energy is very precious, okay? So this says main female. Now, this could be you're the main female. It could be that you just are dealing with feminine energy this week, okay? It's gonna be different for everybody because this is a general collective, right? We're looking at the overall energy. So we want to be balanced in this power. You hold your choices in your hands and you stand in your power and you feel what feels right to me. Which direction should I go? Maybe I need to put them both aside and go this way. It's up to you, okay? Next Monday, Heather, next Monday. Yeah, I'm still to the point where I can't sit in a, in a chair for like a super long time. I have to be able to like to recline and lean back, otherwise I'll like, it hurts. Um, so I wanted to give myself more time to uh, be able to heal more so I can focus on all my private clients. <laughs> Let's get some more. How do you look up your human design? You can go to, I think it's called myhumandesign.com or you can go to the official, <laughs> excuse me, human design website and you can pull up a free report. It doesn't tell you the like detail details, but you can get quite a bit of information from the free report. Come on now. This one, whoops, I forgot. Yeah. Shuffle. Thank you. I had uh, I just had major surgery a couple weeks ago. So I'm healing. Let's do one more. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. She says, I find power in recognizing that every choice will have a ripple effect in some way. For better or worse, accepting the duality has been eye-opening. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You have to always ask yourself, like, don't just make knee-jerk decisions. You have to ask yourself, is this leading me towards where I want to go? Does it feel right to me, or am I doing this out of obligation or habit? Okay. Thank you. Let's 
Look at that, 42 wide open. I love that. You know what's funny? I was thinking about that this morning. So this is, you know, having, having your energy wide open is what I was thinking about this morning because we spend so much time hunched over our phones, hunched over our computers, just doing all this, and it's literally closing off our energy. And we have to remember to open ourselves up, open our energy up and allow ourselves to receive, okay? So if you've never heard me say this before, you can literally get up in the morning, stand up is better, you can sit if you need to, but you open your arms wide and you can say whatever you want. You say something, something to the effect of, I'm ready to receive all that is for my highest good. Try it right now, see how it feels if you've never done this before. It feels so good to open your energy and just say, I'm ready to receive all that is for my highest good. And you're just making that affirmation, that declaration, okay? And you're physically opening up, okay? Did y'all try it? <laughs> Feels so good. Yes, and you can add that or something better. Yes. Love it. Look at that. Earth Mother, feel loved and comforted. Okay? So this is the, look, the energy, the earth, God source energy, all want to connect with you. They're all connected to you. It's whether or not you acknowledge it or not, okay? Whether or not you decide that you're connected or you're feeling uh, disconnected, okay? So this, remember how I told you earlier, you are not alone, you're never alone. This is why we get signs like feathers because they are to remind us that we are not alone. <clears throat> and it is our job to maintain the connection because we have free will. Okay, we are all here for a reason. We are all here for different vibrational reasons. Okay, I was thinking about earlier, um, you know, everybody wants to know what their purpose is. What is your purpose? What are your, your purpose is here to experience life. Just be. Okay, your abilities are what you can do or what you can use to accentuate your life, to make it more magical. This is why it's important to know who you are. Thank you for the hearts to connect and to do all these things because yes, you can, you can lead a life of just existing if that is what you choose, okay? That is your purpose. Your vibration is needed. However, if you choose to use your natural abilities that you came into this life with, then you can greatly accentuate your life, okay? And you can make a bigger difference and so this energy is always wanting to connect with you. You should always be grounding your energy, connecting, doing all the things, okay? But that's, I say you should. That's if you want to use your abilities. That's if you want to accelerate your life, okay? Uh, different birds mean different things. Pigeons and all, no crows though. Crows also represent the truth because they speak the truth. You know, they say, don't tell a crow something you don't want anybody else to know. Um, but it could be pigeons are like messengers. So, yeah, do some research on the specific birds that you're seeing at the time. And then evaluate what you're going through in life and maybe what you're missing or what you've been seeing over and over again and see how that can help you. All right, let's get some more. Let me get a drink of my coffee. You're welcome. 
welcome. You know, there are people out there, and we've all been there, I would say the majority of us, have all been in situations to where we feel alone, we feel sad, we feel this or that. But that is because we are deciding to feel that way. We are letting our brain control our emotions. The thing is, you can decide that, you know what, I'm not going to stay in this sadness. You know what, I'm not alone. And I'm not going to allow my brain to make me think that I'm alone. I'm not going to let this sadness or anger or whatever consume me because I decide what I embody, okay? Because if you let your brain control you, then Lord knows what's going to happen to you, right? <laughs> because you're not in control. But if you say, you know what? I went through a hard time. I did. I'm giving myself grace, but I'm not going to decide that I'm alone. I'm not going to decide that I'm sad 24-7. I'm not going to decide that I'm angry 24-7. I'm going to move forward and decide that I'm healing. I'm deciding that I'm happy. I'm deciding that I'm, you know, recovering or surviving or resilient. Whatever words you want to use, as long as they're positive, it's going to help you to move forward, okay? But sometimes we get trapped in that whirlpool of emotion and poor pitiful me. Okay, and the longer you stay there, the longer you're going to stay there. Okay, and it's nobody else's job to get you out of it. It's your job. Oh, that's cool. We have a white and cream pigeon that visits our farm. We call them my angel pigeons. I love that. Our brain likes to play tricks. Yes, it does. Good for you, Maria. Good for you. Yeah, Google pigeon totem. If you're seeing yeah, pigeons, any type of birds. Instagram always changes my voice. My mom was saying that the other day when she was watching. She was like, yeah, your voice sounded really weird. I don't know why. Let's see what else. We have the world. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> we have Mother Earth and we have the world showing up. I have never pulled this card, so we're going to look in the book and see what message it has for us. It's number 29, which we pulled all these twos. We have 42, 2, 29. We do have 5 and 7. 25, all that. Okay, so 29. Okay, so upright. It says expansion, opening up. Coincidence? No. Okay. So expansion, open it up. The man in this picture is looking out over a bay, above which the beautiful sphere of the earth is rotating. This card is reminding you to expand your vision and hang on. And contemplate some much broader options. The world is wide, so there is a lot out there to consider. In the modern age of technology, this could specifically be referring to creating or expanding to a more global network through the internet or social marketing. Hello, Aquarius Energy. <laughs> um, drawing this card also lets you know that you have unlimited resources available to you, and now is the time to think big. As they say, the world is your oyster, so get ready to gobble it up. Hello. So this is telling you, stop thinking small. Open up. Remember, we have all of this here, this confusion, everything. But when it's in reverse, it's telling you that here, this is what you choose. But you have to first think broader. You know, I had, I've had many people tell me, well, I just feel so lost. I, I don't know what to do. I just feel so lost. 
Good. I'm glad you feel lost. Because when you feel lost, that means anything can happen. All possibilities are on the table. Okay? When you are so laser focused and hell bent on one thing, working out it has to be this one thing. I, I have to. If it doesn't work out, I'm a failure. Then that's where you don't want to be. Okay? It is good to be lost. Because, like I said, all options are available when you're feeling that way. This is when you open yourself up and you ask for God, where, where should I go? What is the next right step for me? Okay. What do I feel about this? Please stop. Upgrading, I like that. <laughs> you still listen good, Maria. I'm glad you're here. So is that making sense? Is it inspiring you this week? Because we were talking about <laughs> Taylor Swift energy. Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, we're talking about this is a week of choice. It's a week of not playing small, not getting sucked into petty conflict, not letting yourself or anybody else feel this like need or urge to control, not getting stuck in your ego. Because remember, your ego is purely focused on the 3D, okay? You do still need your ego, okay? Your ego is never going to die. So don't believe that. Okay, you don't have to kill your ego. You have to learn how to be balanced with your ego and your higher self. Because we cannot deny that we are here on earth living this human experience. Okay, our ego is designed to keep us safe, our ego is designed as a tool. So, whenever you see that your ego is taking control, you could say, you know what, my ego is just trying to keep me safe. It's using fear. It's using sadness or anger, whatever it is. It's using this tool to try to keep me in one place because it thinks it's keeping me safe. I acknowledge that. I appreciate it. However, that is not serving my life. So I'm going to tell the ego to shh. And I'm going to listen to my internal self, my higher self that can have access to all of this information, all of these opportunities, and I'm gonna to listen to that, okay? That's where you are right now. Keep hearing my grandma tell me I was going to be a, a failure. Oh, nah, uh She doesn't know what she's talking about. So many amazing things happening. The more receptive I am, the more happens, yes. Never thought of it like that? Well, good. I'm glad to give you another viewpoint to, you know, to let it marinate. See how you feel. Um, what time is it? Okay. Oh, let's look at the money deck and see what we need to know. What is our money focus? What do we need to know for this week? We have investment. This one likes to pop up. Okay, there's three ways to resonate. Let's see. It says number one, finances are looking good and growing. Remember this weekend we had arguments. Um, and I said, no need to argue over money because you feel like you need to argue over money, then you're in the lack mindset, right? You want to invest your money. You want to always see that every penny that you spend is an investment in your journey. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's your mortgage, your rent, your utility bills, whatever it may be that you need to pay, that is an investment in your journey. Okay, always pay those in gratitude. Number two, this is a great time to invest. And number three, set a strong foundation and you will see the fruits of your labor. Okay, your money needs to work for you. You don't work for your money. You would just receive money, okay? 
So making your money work for you instead of just getting it and putting it out, getting it and putting it out. It's never going to get you anywhere, okay? Being angry that you have to pay bills is never going to get you anywhere. It's going to get you broke. <laughs> Always pay in gratitude because you have the money to pay it. And it's helping you along your journey, okay? The Numina, seek inspiration in twilight wanderings. Seek inspiration in twilight wanderings. It's wanderings, not wanderings. W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G-S. So that's all about the mind. And like exploration, right? What do you do when you're lost? You wander around. Okay? So it says, seek inspiration in twilight wanderings. Explore, explore, explore. Explore your internal self, right? That's where everything is hidden, but where everything is, okay? You, you wander around. You allow things to come to you. You experience things, and you don't talk shit about yourself if something doesn't work out, okay? It just wasn't meant for you. It was an experience you had, and it wasn't meant for you. Moving on to the next, okay? This is why we don't attach ourselves to outcomes. We don't attach our self-worth to situations, okay? I know it's easier said than done. Believe me, I get that. I'm not ignorant to that. However, when we don't attach our self-worth to the um, outcome of a situation, whether it be a job, a relationship, whatever it may be, then we can see it as an experience, a learning experience, more discovery, and then we move forward, okay? You're in your inner self a lot? Good. Do I do 101 classes? I teach in the tribe. I have a whole thing called the tribe. And I have modules in there. We're about to have our tribe coaching soon. Next week, I think it is. I don't remember the exact date. I'll have to look. But um, I teach all kinds of stuff in there. So feel free to join that. Makes me think of our dreams. Yeah. I'm so glad I happened to have the day off, and happen to be online. I've gotten so many nuggets of wisdom this morning. Oh, I'm so glad. There are no accidents, absolutely. You'd be shocked at how many people say that they just happened to, you know, come across my live, and they stopped, and they listened, and a message was directly for them. And I'm like, yes, because you were led here to hear these messages. So thank you for sharing that. All right, let's do one from the Rebel Deck. <laughs> You're welcome. I wish I could be here all day, every day, but sitting on live does not pay the bills. <laughs> it does not support me and my children. <laughs> if I could, then I would. What do we need to know? What does the Rebel Deck want to tell us? If you don't know the Rebel Deck, this is a little sassy deck. <laughs> so... rebel because fuck it we've been talking about this Aquarius is the rebel rebel because fuck it right that's what I keep trying to tell you guys look at the underneath it, it says winning <laughs> you got a good thing going don't ruin that shit <laughs> but here here's the thing what you need to understand about rebelling okay rebels Real rebels are not stupid. They are very intelligent. They know why they are rebelling. They are rebelling for a bigger reason. Okay? They see the bigger picture. So we don't have midlife, you guys. We have midlife awakenings. And that's when you start seeing people go against everything that they had been living. 
And people are like, oh, they're crazy. They've lost their mind. They're going through a midlife crisis. It's a midlife awakening, okay? Because it's like, oh, this is not the life that I actually wanted. I was just going through the motions and doing what people expected of me. And so then they start to rebel because they see the bigger picture now. They see that our time here is precious. They see that there's more to life than what they've experienced. And now they're ready to go experience. Now, do they always do the right thing? No, because not everybody knows what they want at first, right? Like the, the guy goes for the sports car and the younger girlfriend or whatever. That's not emotionally mature. That's not a true rebel, okay? <laughs> um, but rebels that go against programming, that go against the man or whatever, you know, they're doing it because they know they're smart, okay? You don't want to be a dumb rebel. You want to be a smart rebel. You want to go against everything that you have been taught that is negative about you and your life, okay? Because, again... Like it says, fuck it. Life is an experience. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, it does not. You are allowed to experience. Okay? Does that make sense? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You also needed to hear this today? Good. I haven't labeled rebel when I thought I was just fighting for justice or speaking the truth. Yeah, I mean, embrace it. I'm so glad that you guys find value in all of this. I really do. Let's do one more card because Instagram will wind up kicking me off in just a second. Let's do this one. Queen of the Moon. Is someone trying to pop in? On the live, they were. Look, we just had this. We have Patience, number 36. So this red balloon always makes me think of the inner child. Okay, and it's telling you that things are moving, things are happening, and I am not a patient person. So if you're not patient, I get it. <laughs> However, we have to learn to be patient and to let the universe do the work for us. It is not our job to figure out everything because there's no possible way that we can figure everything out. God, America. Do, do you understand? Sorry, somebody keeps trying to invite themselves to my live and I keep having to decline it, so I apologize. It's annoying. So anyways, this is, you know, it's like you going to a new portal. This is about, you know, you're seeing only the small picture here, but there's so much more out there for you, okay? Live in wonder, like childlike wonder. Like, you know what? I wonder what wonderful things the universe has in store for me today. Right? Here I said, especially on Thursday, you know, what miracle can I witness today? Ask that. Literally, ask it. What miracle can I witness today? You can ask that every day. All right? What wonderful thing am I going to experience today? And, and you're going to start to see more and more and more. Okay? Because we have three. Three is creativity. It's, it's like that childlike energy. Okay, it's communication as well. Six, it, this person keeps inviting and going off, inviting and going off, and I don't know how to block them, so sorry. Anyways, six is harmony, love, connection, healing. Okay, so if you're wanting more out of life, you have to communicate that with the universe and ask them, what amazing thing can I experience today? And then when you put three and six together, it becomes nine. Nine is things come to fruition. Nine is that higher wisdom, being able to see more of the big picture. Does that make sense? Okay. It's being patient and knowing that it takes the universe to move the chess pieces and for you 
to bring the mind down to peace so you can understand more, okay? Well, there I do have moderators on TikTok. However, I don't know how they would be able to see or boot the person off because they just keep popping in here and trying to get on my live. So I don't know how the moderator would be able to see them and boot them off. Yep, bring on the miracles. <laughs> Well, I have, um, I don't even know if Tara is here today. Yeah, see, I didn't think it was something a moderator can do. I tried to click on their name, but it went off. Like, they know they know what they're doing. They're just here to, to distract. So, thank you. So, I hope all this resonates. If you missed the beginning of the reading, I put it on YouTube so you can go back and watch the whole thing. We get so much information in these readings. It's not just about the day to day. This stuff you use throughout your entire life, okay? So make sure you're following me on YouTube and you can watch the entire video every week, Monday and Friday. And it's going to really help you if you use these tools that we are given, okay? If you you can't just use it in the comfort of your own home. You have to use it as you go out into society. Okay? That's the only way that you're going to make a difference in your life. And don't be afraid of what happens because if like say you go out and you have to set boundaries with somebody, you know what? If they get mad, then that just means they were used to crossing your boundaries. That just means that they are now having to be responsible for their behavior and it upsets them. That's their problem, not yours. Okay? Your, your solution is like, okay, if you keep crossing this boundary, then this is going to happen. And it's your decision your job to follow through. It's the only way that you're going to create change with the people around you. Okay? So, I hope you have a wonderful week. If you need anything, the link is in my bio on Instagram and on TikTok. Uh, get into the tribe. We will be doing our tribe coaching next week and connecting. And I have my tribe chat where you can ask questions just like on here, but it's easier for me to answer you. <laughs> so, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Mwah. Love you all, and I will see you on Friday, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bye, y'all.